Hello and welcome to our fifth episode and today we're going to be looking at Berber skinks. So I'm going to give you a quick um, look at the Berber skink first and then I'm going to pop her back in a box so that um, she doesn't run off. Now whilst you're looking at her, um, this one is a female. She is ever so slightly smaller and when I say ever so slightly she's only a gram smaller than her male counterpart. Now none of these are named yet um, and hopefully at the end of this session we're going to name one of them um, but the other two we're going to leave running. So over the next week or so between now and Monday the 13th um, at 3pm we would like you to keep thinking about female names um, and we're going to draw the, um, the male name or at least tell you the male name at the end of this, end of this clip. So I'm just going to pop her back in a box. Okay. So the Berber skink is native to Northwest Africa and Asia, and scarily they can live in captivity up to 20 years. So these guys, alongside um, most of these reptiles that we hold, are lifetime commitments. So when you think about getting a reptile, it's really important that you think about who is actually going to look after them because they are sometimes, in fact most of the time, a greater commitment than having a dog or a cat in the, in the length of time that they live. Now, the three that we have got are approximately this long. So they're not fully grown as yet. They can get up to 16 inches, which is 400 mil, which is... Um, ever so slightly, so four inches bigger than your normal ruler. So um, they've got quite a bit of growing to do. And to get to that size, they eat the following foods. So they can eat um, crickets. These guys don't like crickets at the moment. I don't know whether they're slightly too big for them and they're, they're worried about eating them or whether they've just not got a taste for them yet. But they certainly like their mealworms. And the mealworms, those little things that you see on the Celebrity, they get dumped on people so they're about that big, really wiggly. Um, now, for these guys, they need vitamins, um, the, the white powder and the calcium, um, ready to, to allow them to, to eat. And it helps them produce um, good scales, good nails, and basically look good, so they get a nice shiny um, skin. Now, these guys, we're gonna show you their enclosure, um, up close and personal in a second. But these guys like burrowing. They're the only animal currently that we have that actively burrows. So they've got a really deep substrate. And the substrate that they have got is like soil. So it's um, as desert-like as we can possibly get it. So it's a special mix that you buy from pet shop. And inside the viv, you can see it's a four foot long viv. And inside we've got hides, so we've got tubes for them to hide in. Um, they're cardboard so they're easily replaceable if they get wet or soiled or anything like that. They've got a hide here, so there's three hides in this viv. Um, and a viv is basically a wooden enclosure with glass doors. So there's three hides, there's one here with its hole, its entrance pointing away from the glass. There's one at the back here, and there is one over there. Now this one in the middle, there are leaves in front of. And that one there is quite well um, burrowed in, so they can't see out, so they feel protected. Now around the water bowl that's up the corner in the cool end, we've got rocks, so I'll give them a little bit more of, a, of, of something to interact with. And inside the water bowl there is a rock, forming two purposes. One, in case they get into the water bowl and struggle to get out. And two, it gives them something to sit on um, if they want to do something different. Now the two things that we have in here for um, for heat and light, there is a UVB light in here um, and that is the thing that makes this viv um, light and there is a ceramic heater in here as well. Um, both of these set to quite high temperatures because these guys are, are ultimately desert dwelling animals and they're set to between 35 and 40 degrees so all year round this room sits at about 25 degrees because of the amount of wooden vivs that we've got. So they hold the thermal energy in this room quite well. Um, and then inside they are very warm. I'm just going to close this. 
Now, to keep these guys in, they are quite um, good at escaping. We use Viv, Viv wedges and they just sit in the glass and they stop the glass moving. You've got to have quite a lot of force to make that um, glass move. Now, we haven't had many questions about the burger skinks and it may be for one or two reasons. A, you don't know what they are or B, people aren't interacting with this post. So what I would like you to do, when this airs, it will be Friday the 10th, which is my birthday, and I would actually like to try and get the likes up on our pet page a little bit. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is as you're watching this video, just comment somebody in that may like us to come to a party, may like to interact with our videos, may like to interact with our posts because we've got lots of things that we're sharing on there at the moment to keep kids entertained. They can't go out and play with their friends, um, so they need something to do, and hopefully what's on our page will help um, kids um, boredom. So give a friend a, a mention on the bottom of this post, get them to interact with our page, but also send in some names for some female burger skinks. So I'm just gonna give you another quick look at these guys, and I'm gonna show you the male burger skink. Now, one of the names that very quickly came in from Laura um, in Sutton in Ashfield was Justin Berber Skink, and that one has stuck. It's stuck quite well. It made us laugh a lot. Now these guys have got a really pretty um, white cream belly with brown and orange markings on their top. Now the brown and orange markings match their substrate, they match what they live on, and it gives them a little bit of camouflage. Now, these guys have a small snout, so that's their nose bit, and I'm gonna try and get his tongue in. You can see that he's constantly tasting as he moves. Now, he's probably not gonna do it whilst he's on camera. Let's just touch his mouth and see if he does it. So he's constantly, there he isn't gonna do it. But most of the time when he's not on camera, he is tasting the air. And he started doing it, now he's not on the camera. He, they are constantly tasting the air to try and work out where their next meal's coming from. These guys have got very, very sharp claws. Um, again, for burrowing, for moving. Um, and they are perfectly adapted to the conditions that they live in. And it is really important that with these kind of animals, um, all reptiles, that they have quite specific living enclosures. So each animal that we've got, all of their living enclosures are tailored to make them as natural as possible. So, um, one of the key messages from this one is to make their enclosure as natural as possible. And these guys are the only ones that we're allowed to live on sand, that as far as reptiles go, um, or lizards go, sorry, because these guys are at lesser risk of that dreaded thing called impaction, which is where they eat the substrate than any of the other lizards that we have. So just pop him back in his box. So I'm going to round off here. A um, couple of things that I want you to do with this post then. At the bottom of the post, please comment your name, a friend's name, just to get them interactive and to try and get as many suggestions as female names for these Berber skinks as we can. Hopefully ones that are gonna make us smile, maybe Harry Potter related, get us some in, um, and then um, we can have a look on Monday the 13th at what suggestions we've got. Now coming up on Monday the 13th at 3 p.m. we need all of your questions on crested geckos, and on Wednesday the 15th at 3 p.m., we need all of your questions on BOSC monitor lizards. So any questions um, that you can send in will be greatly appreciated. Um, and this really does go out to our cubs because we are brilliant at sending in questions. So any of the cubs from First Woodville that want to send in some questions, get them into us and um, we'll do our best to answer them. So until next time, take care and bye bye.